I guess the first thing I like to do on any DJI build is update the firmware on the DJI video transmitter and uh, activate the DJI video transmitter and get it bound to my goggles and my controller. So we're going to plug in USB and power up the quad and we're going to start DJI Assistant V2. Uh, make sure you've got the DJI Assistant V2 FPV series. There is a DJI Assistant app for like Mavic and so forth and it won't work. Oh, and it looks like the firmware is already current, so great, we can skip that step. Next, we'll grab our DJI goggles and controller and we'll bind them. You have to bind the goggles first because when you bind the goggles, it erases the bind of any controllers you previously bound. Here on the Vista, we're just gonna press the bind button here. It'll go from green to red. And on the goggles, we'll press the bind button here. Then on the controller, we're gonna press the record button this button on the face and this button here on this scroll wheel at the same time. The LED will go blue indicating it's in bind mode and once again we'll press the bind button on the Vista. And now it's bound as well. And just to double check we do still have picture in the goggles. Great, we're bound. Next, I'm going to plug the USB cable into the flight controller and we'll do our beta flight setup. And I'm going to power down, I'm going to unplug the battery and power down the Vista right now so it's not sitting there cooking while I'm doing this part. Now, at the time that I'm making this video, Betaflight 4.3 is just about to release. Uh, and so I will be using Betaflight Configurator 1080 Release Candidate 3. By the time you're watching this, hopefully Betaflight 4.3 will have released and you'll just be using Betaflight 4.3. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in USB and here in the configurator, I should see a new COM port appear, COM 11. I'll go ahead and hit connect. I'll get some warnings, don't worry about the warnings. I just wanna see in the upper left what firmware is on the board. It looks like it's 420, so we definitely are gonna upgrade. And what target is on the board, it's the Cricut F7. That information we're gonna need going forward. The other thing I'm gonna do is go to the presets tab and not because I wanna use one of these presets, but because it is a convenient place to back up the configuration of the flight controller. So I'm gonna hit save backup. I'm gonna to go to the desktop and I'm just gonna save Cricut Cinema uh, BF420 factory config. Great, so now I've saved that. Next, I'm gonna to go to the firmware flasher tab and I need to enable show unstable releases, at least today, because Betaflight 4.3 isn't released yet. And I'm gonna choose release and release candidate. And then I need to choose my target here. Uh, and normally what you can do is you can just hit auto detect and it will auto detect the target. But you can see up here, it says Cricut detected the board, or uh, configurator detected the board, Cricut F7, but no target was found. And this is a weird one. So if we look at the product page for this flight controller and scroll all the way down, we can see there's a link here firmware and configuration files. And it's sometimes the case that manufacturers distribute their own beta flight firmware for their flight controller. Uh, and the product page is usually the place to go for that if it's not found in the configurator. But I do see, if I just search here, Cricut, there is a target, NBD Cricut F7, which sure seems like that's the right target. I'm gonna give it a try because I really wanna try Betaflight 4.3. So I will load firmware and flash firmware. Get a little warning here that my target is, does not match. And I'm gonna go ahead anyway, but I'm gonna keep in mind if anything, like if after I do this, like nothing works, that's probably why. All right, now that that's done, let's power cycle the board. And uh, connect. The very next thing we need to do always is apply custom defaults. Uh, otherwise, your flight controller will not be configured. Uh, and having done that, we'll connect again. We'll get some more warnings, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. We're gonna go ahead in and we're gonna try to do our basic configuration. Now, I always like to start my configuration in the Betaflight Ports tab because this gets my receiver and so forth all sort of talking to the flight controller, and then I go from there. Uh, if we go back to the wiring diagram, we can remind ourselves that the DJI TX and RX lines are on UART 6, and the S bus signal from our receiver is on UART 1. Those are the basic accessories that we've got hooked up, and those are the UARTs that they're on, and that's the information we need here.
So on UART 1, we've got Serial RX enabled. That is correct. That's where our receiver is. And on UART 6, we have MSP enabled, which is what we need for the DJI, uh, the communication between the flight controller and the DJI VTX. So we're actually good to go. Next, we're going to go to the receiver tab and we're going to check our receiver protocol is correct and it is SBUS, which is correct for the DJI controller and the DJI video transmitter. And then finally, we're going to go to the CLI tab and we're going to type get SBUS underscore baud underscore fast. I just hit the tab key there to auto complete that. And SBUS baud fast is off. We're going to type set SBUS baud fast equals on. Uh, DJI can do either fast or slow SBUS, and obviously you want the fast one. And we'll type save. You'll also need to go into your goggles, go into settings, then device, and then you're going to find the protocol option, and you're going to change it from normal to fast uh, if it's not already on fast. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and power up my goggles, power up my controller, and power up my quad, and I'm going to check whether I have movement of the controller. So I'm gonna move the sticks on the controller and sure enough, I do have movement here in the receiver tab, that's great. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double check that the sticks move the correct control. So as I move the throttle up and down, I see the throttle channel moving. As I move the yaw stick left and right, I see the yaw channel moving. As I move the pitch stick up and down, I see the pitch channel moving. And as I move the roll stick left and right, I see the roll channel moving. That's perfect. And I'm also gonna check the endpoints. The endpoints, when the stick is all the way down, should be about 1,000. And when the stick is all the way up, should be about 2,000. And the same for left and right. Oof, that's way off. 989 is way off. If your endpoints aren't correct, there is a calibration uh, method you can do in the goggles. It is in settings, remote controller, and calibration. And I'm gonna do that now. The next change I want you to make is to change the stick low threshold from 1050 to 1010. That stick low threshold creates a little bit of dead band at the bottom of the throttle. And the intent is that some people might not have their endpoints correct and uh, it would create a problem for them. Uh, because we have our endpoints correct, we can get rid of some of that dead band at the bottom of the throttle and have the quad, have the, sort of the full resolution and, and range of our throttle stick. We will then hit save. Next, we're gonna to wanna to set up our auxiliary modes so we can arm the quad, switch to angle mode and so forth. We're gonna to go to the modes tab and uh, I'm gonna uncheck hide unused modes if it's checked. And then I'm going to go to the arm mode and hit add range. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all my switches in like a default position. Most people will push all their switches away from them uh, before they power the controller on. And they just make that a force of habit so that when you power up the controller and arm the quad, you know that everything is however you wanted it to be by default. So we're gonna push all the switches away and then we're gonna to go to the arm mode and hit add range. And then we are going to put the arm switch into whatever we would like to be the arm position. So maybe you'll pull the arm switch all the way towards you to arm. I like to use this upper left shoulder switch to arm because it's right there near my index finger. You'll notice that when I move that switch, this little yellow tick mark moves with it. So I'm gonna put the arming switch in the armed position and then I'm gonna drag this yellow slider range so it's on top of that little yellow tick mark and hit save. And now we've told the flight controller that when that switch is in that position, we want to arm the quad. We're gonna do the same thing with angle mode, which will let us put the quad into auto level mode. I'll hit add range. I like to use this right hand face switch for angle mode. And I like to have the default position be acro mode, which is nothing, no modes active. The middle position be angle mode. And so I will go ahead and look at that where that yellow tick mark is and the slider is covering it. So I'll hit save. And then the last thing I like to put on that switch is turtle mode, which lets the quadcopter flip over if you crash and it's upside down. So we're gonna go find that. Oh, turtle mode isn't there. It's because I haven't set up my motor protocol yet. Okay, let's pause our aux modes and go to the motor protocol real quick. We are gonna go to the motors tab and we're gonna set the ESC motor protocol to DSHOT 600. And then I'd also like you to enable bi-directional DSHOT and agree to that and then hit save and reboot. Okay, going back to the modes tab, now we should be able to find turtle mode, which is also known as flip over after crash mode. There it is, we'll hit add range. And I'm gonna put that switch in the 
down position, I'm going to drag this over so it covers that little yellow tick mark and hit save. And then the last thing I like to do is set up a buzzer switch so that if I crash and I can't find the quad, I can make it beep. Uh, and that is going to be beeper mode here. We'll hit add range. And I like to put that on this shoulder switch on the right side. I will just pull that switch all the way towards me. That's going to be how we activate our beeper. Once again, I'll identify the little yellow tick mark and drag that over so it covers the yellow tick mark and hit save. And then the last thing you should do is hide unused modes and we can just check the function of our switches. So I'll put all the switches pushed away from me in this sort of default neutral state and then arming. Yep, so arming turned red. Arming is disabled, but it would have armed if we were not plugged in on the bench. Angle mode, flip crash or turtle mode, and beeper. We can see that they are turning yellow when I flip the switch, showing that they would activate. Great, let's just hit save real quick and move on. Next, I'm gonna to need to check the configuration of the motors. And this is a place where Betaflight 4.3 is going to make our life so much easier. I'm gonna to go to the motors tab. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the reorder motors wizard because our flight controller and our ESC are flipped upside down because of the way this frame builds up. So the motors are actually flipped upside down from where the Betaflight expects them to be. The reorder motor wizards will fix that for us. I'm gonna hit, I understand the risks, propellers are removed, they are removed, uh, and I'm gonna start the wizard. And I'm gonna click on the spinning motor, and the spinning motor is the back left motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Now I'm gonna click on the front left, back right, and front right, and we are going to double check Yep, all good, and hit save. We'll connect again, and this time we'll hit the motor direction wizard. And again, I understand the risks, propellers are removed, and we'll hit the wizard. We will start spinning all the motors, and we're gonna check that the direction matches the diagram that we see here. So this front left motor should be spinning clockwise. It is not, so I'm gonna click motor four to reverse it. And it is now spinning clockwise. Uh, this back left should be counterclockwise. It is not. I'm having a little trouble telling which way it's going. Let's just get a piece of paper and look at which way it pushes it. Okay, so clearly that one is going the wrong way. We'll reverse that one. Correct. And that one is going the right way. And that one, number one, is going the wrong way. Okay, now they're all going the correct direction. Perfect. Now, because our flight controller and our ESC were installed upside down, we also need to tell Betaflight where our flight controller is and which direction is up front and so forth. We're gonna do that by uh, going to the, well, first we're gonna hit calibrate accelerometer in the setup tab. And that will turn the accelerometer right side up. There we go. And then we're gonna move the quad with our hands. We're gonna tip it forward and you can see it's having some trouble. It is not moving forward, it is uh, moving backward when I tip it forward. So we're gonna go to the configuration tab and we are going to, we flipped it along the roll axis. So I believe we need to have 180 degrees roll alignment. And let's save and reboot. And we'll just check and see if that was correct. Here in the setup tab again, we will pitch forward, correct. Pitch back, correct. Looking at how this 3D model moves. Roll right, correct. Roll left, correct. Yaw, left and right. The 3D model is moving correctly and matching the movements of the real quad. Our board alignment is correct. What else do we need to do to get this guy working? Let's see. Uh, I like to disable the maximum arm angle. You do that by setting 180 degrees. The maximum arm, arm angle prevents the quadcopter from arming if it is not flat and level. That is intended as a safety precaution, but in real life it is often just annoying because it means that if you're like slightly on a rock or on a hill, you can't fly. I'll just set that to 180 to disable it. I'm gonna set the craft name. You could set it to cinema or something like that. You could put your, you can also put your pilot handle in there, JB. I'm also gonna over here where it says D-Shot Beacon Configuration, I'm gonna enable the D-Shot Beacon. And what that's gonna do is we don't have a beeper on this quad, 
but we can use the motors as a beeper the same way as they go do do doot when you start up. We can use that as a beeper, so I'm going to enable that. And that'll allow us to, if we flip the beeper switch, it'll make the motors beep. And that's nice. Can help you find the quad if you lose it or something. At this point, we could go fly the quadcopter, but there's a couple other little quality of life things that you should do first. Uh, and one of them is going to be to set up the on-screen display or OSD. Uh, the main thing that we're going to want to see in the on-screen display is the battery voltage, which tells us when our battery is about to die and when we need to come home and change batteries. So in order to do that, the first thing you're going to need to do is turn on your quadcopter, plug it in, and plug in your goggles. And in the goggles, there is an option that has to be enabled before you can actually see the on-screen display. And that option is in the settings menu. And then you're gonna to go to display. And then you're gonna make sure that custom OSD is on. And then here in the Betaflight OSD tab, I'm gonna enable battery voltage. There are three OSD profiles. The default one that you'll be using is profile number one, and that's all that most people use. Uh, most people don't have reason to set up the second and third one. So we're going to go to battery voltage and we're gonna enable the checkbox for profile number one, and that will appear in the center of the screen. And this screen that you're looking at here is laid out for a 4.3 analog camera but the DJI camera is widescreen. So in order to actually lay it out, we're just gonna look in the goggles. It's gonna be a little bit annoying because I have glasses. And then we're gonna just kind of drag this around to where, and look at where it ends up and see if that's where we want it to be. And I like to have it just on top of the goggle battery display. Let's see how that looks. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, now you might be thinking to yourself, that's a little bit redundant because the goggles actually have the voltage already in them. And that's true. So instead, what let's do is let's turn off battery voltage and turn on battery average cell voltage, which is uh, going to be useful in a slightly different way. Yeah. Uh, the advantage of battery average cell voltage is if you've got a 4S battery or a 6S battery, you might have a little bit of trouble remembering. Oh, good. That's where I want it. You might have a little bit of trouble remembering what the voltage is where your battery's almost dead, but as long as you remember 3.5 volts average cell voltage is roughly where you should stop flying, then this battery average cell voltage will work regardless of whether you're using 4S, 6S, whatever battery you might be using. So that's nice. The other one that is worth turning on is this disarmed indicator, which is gonna tell you whether the quad is armed or disarmed or whether it is in uh, angle mode. It'll give you that status and that's good to know. Um, Again, I'm just going to turn it on and then I'm going to drag it like somewhere that looks right to me. Now there's various other things we could turn on and off, but for now, I think we're just going to leave it and we're going to proceed. Oh, right. Don't forget to hit save. Now you might be tempted to mess around with the PID tuning and most likely the default Betaflight PID tune is not going to be optimal for this Cinewhoop using three inch props instead of like a five inch freestyle quad. But I'm gonna at least fly it on the default PID tune and maybe a separate video would be working out a better PID tune for it. So we're gonna leave the PIDs at default for now. However, I do suggest you try tweaking the Betaflight rates. Now, if you have flown for a while, you might know what rates you prefer. On the other hand, if you're trying to figure out your rates, you're gonna to have to play with them. Uh, the short version of how rates work is that the center sensitivity controls how sensitive the quad feels when you're at well, maybe less than 25 or 30% deflection when you're making fine movements and max rate or full stick uh, rate is how fast the quad will spin when you do a full stick like a snap roll. And then Expo sort of changes the curve between them. And unfortunately, there's no way to really do it other than to just play with the rates and find one that works for you. But what I like to do for my Cinewhoops is I will go to the Betaflight Presets tab and I will choose a rates preset. And you might think I would use Joshua Bardwell rates, but those are actually my freestyle rates. What I actually like to do is use the heads up FPV racing rates. Uh, and I will pick that and save and reboot and it'll apply those rates. And then here in the PID tuning tab, in the rate profile settings, we see we've got 533. That's the 533 rates, as he calls them. And then I like to add a little bit of expo here uh, because I like that. And I find that those racing rates 
are actually decent for Cinewhoop flying as well. Uh, some people would have dedicated rates for their Cinewhoops, but that's what I like to do. Now, the other thing that you should do when you're setting up a Betaflight 4.3 quad is you should go to the RC Link presets, and you should see if there is an RC Link preset for the link that you're doing. Uh, and I'm going to just look for a DJI RC Link. Here's an SBUS one, but the, since we're using fast SBUS, this is not actually going to be appropriate. You don't absolutely have to do this. The defaults will work. That's why they're the defaults, but you'll get just a little bit better performance, uh, smoother motors, better stick feel if you do set up a preset for what you're doing. Uh, there doesn't seem to be one for DJI fast SBUS, so we're going to leave that alone. And we'll also take a look at RC smoothing to see what's there. And I think we should choose cinematic RC smoothing since cinematic is what we're doing. And with that done, I think it's time to actually like arm the quad. So I'm gonna plug in without the smoke stopper this time. I'm gonna turn on the controller and wait for the green light. Green light, green light. Oh, I guess I'm gonna unplug USB, although not that it really matters, and arm. Seems good. Reaper, working. Turtle mode, working. We're looking good. Uh, I think we are ready to take it out and do a test hover. Now, before we test hover it, we'll have to put the props on. These gem fan props have these little inserts. You're gonna need to put the inserts in before you install them on the motors. It can be a real pain in the butt to get in. You have to kind of put them in exactly straight. Sometimes it feels like they're tapered more towards one side than the other and are easier to put in if you flip them over. There we go, got it. So that's in. And then we're gonna install them in what's called props in configuration, which means that their props are gonna be spinning towards the vertical center line of the quad. If you're not sure, go to the Betaflight Motors tab, look at the diagram and look at which direction the props are spinning. If you aren't sure how to tell how props spin uh, for just by looking at them. I've got a video called Props for Noobs uh, and it goes through how to put your props on correctly. Now I'm gonna guess that these M2 by six millimeter screws are intended for the props, but I am not gonna use them because in my experience, six mil, Ooh. huh. Well, in my experience, six millimeter screws do not protrude long enough through most T-mount style uh, hubs, but Clearly that is not true in this case because that is plenty of protrusion. And in fact, I guess this must have a thinner hub than the other props I've used. I normally would use an M2 by seven millimeter screw on a T-mount prop. Uh, the six millimeter is clearly correct. So we're just gonna find the screw hole there and tighten that down. And we'll do two of those in each of the props. Alrighty, props are on. Let's just check the prop direction is correct. Yes, and then we have to mount a battery. And this one's a weird one because it doesn't seem to use standard battery straps. Instead, it looks like there are these little tabs here and I'm gonna guess they're intended for like a rubber band. Um, the battery is gonna basically go on like this and then like a rubber band is gonna go across it like this. Maybe we'll double that up. Oh, that seems clever. Let's see if it's actually clever. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna get a battery strap. Oh yeah, that's plenty out of the way of the props. Yeah, okay. That's gotta be how it's intended to be, right? These, these little tabs here can't be for holding on with a rubber band. Surely I misinterpreted that. Yeah. And then, Yay. And since it's raining outside, I'm gonna hover test it here in my office, which is a terrible idea. Do not hover test your quads for the first time indoors. That's how you get holes in your ceiling and piss off your significant other. But I'm gonna do it. And the first thing I'm gonna do before I take off is I'm just gonna arm the quad and rock it left, right, forward, back with the roll stick and pitch stick without actually taking off. And that way, if anything is wrong, it hopefully will freak out, but not freak out at a higher throttle. There. 
that always feels so good when you finally hover test a build, especially a build that was as much hassle as this one. And I don't want it to sound like I'm crapping on the cinema specifically. All micro builds all are, are fiddly, although this one is par particularly fiddly, I think. But be that as it may, what you're probably wondering at this point is how does it fly? And yes, I will be flight testing it. Uh, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified about that as soon as I put it out there. But in the meantime, I'm going to suggest you check out my review of the GEPRC Cinelog 3.0. It is a ready-to-fly, bind-and-fly Cinewhoop from GEPRC. And uh, when you see how good it flies, you may find yourself wondering, is there any point in something like this? I'll put a card on screen so you can check that out, as well as a couple extra cards with another video that you might like and the opportunity to subscribe and join my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. If today is the day when you feel like I've earned it, click that link, go ahead and subscribe. And if not, I'll just keep making content until I do earn it. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying.